We would like to greet everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is our first Sunday for the year 2024. How many of you are glad that uh, you're here in church? So some of you have come for uh, the 31st time. Again, we would like to welcome you. My name is Mark. I'm one of the pastors here with uh, Coach Melfred, who is one of our campus missionaries. We have Pastor Anthony, who's not around with us. He's enjoying his new car. He had a new car. And so, uh, sabi niya gana, Pastor Mark, di mo na ako mag ng service. Ha, bakit? Kasi na-bless ako ng car. So ngayon, i-enjoy ko muna. <laughs> Talaga, <laughs> nag-leave lang siya for this uh, uh, anniversary po ni, ng, ni Pastor Anthony sa ni Miss June. So, uh, they're still celebrating. So, please greet them, alright? So, text them. And so, again, to those of you who have come for the very first time, marami pong salamat. We are victory. We're here. The reason why we exist because we want to honor God. And we don't just honor God, but at the same time, we are serious about His Word before He left earth. And He gave a specific commandment. It's a commission that for every person that would follow Him, He said is, go and make disciples. And that is why... We're here today because we want to make sure that we fulfill that call of God in our lives. Can you say amen? Pwede po bang malaman if this is your first time to be here? Kasi special kayo. Okay, iba. Naku, masyadong matagal na na yung huling uh, pagdala nyo sa, sa service natin. Pero nandito po kayo. If this is your very first time to attend, will you please raise up your hands? We do want to welcome you here in Victory. Please raise up your hands. Yung mga first time. Oh, we have a first time visitor there. Thank you po. Meron pa ba? Ayun, meron pa, meron pa. Pakitaas ng kamay, iba, nahihiya pa. Marami pong salamat. Thank you for being part of our worship service. And again, to those of you who have come, if you're just new in church, as uh, Coach Malfred says, if there's anything you want us to do for you, please don't hesitate. Ha? Wala nang isip-isip, wala nang hiya-hiya. Punta na ho sa amin. At uh, sabihin nyo, Pastor, kailangan ko ng pera. Ay, nako, pagpipray kita. Okay. Na yung blessing na Lord. Um, talagang uh, maging, uh, di ba, mabuhay yung uh, pagiging Kristiyano po natin. But really, honestly, we're here for you. If there's anything that, uh, whatever you need is counseling, you need comfort, whatever that is, we're here to stand with you. Amen? Well, praise God. You know, this morning, just want to let you know, before we start, to have our service, the leaders of our church and the volunteers would gather at least 45 minutes or 40 minutes before the service. We're already here praying for you, praying for the service. And this morning, when before we start praying, I've asked a question. Sabi yung ganon, as leaders, what do you think is the word of the Lord? for us, for the year 2024. Ano kaya yung word ni Lord para sa atin? I'm sure in your time of devotion, the time of your worship, diba, you're reading God's word, or maybe the Lord impressed you something. Sabi ko, one word lang or statement. All right? And someone says, I think the word of the Lord for us is the word purpose. It's going back to God's purpose for the year 2024. A person says, well, I think the word for us is the word prayer. I think the Lord wanted us to be specific. If there's anything that we want to do, great for God, that the miracles that we've been praying for, the breakthrough that we're praying for, we got to pray as a church. I said, wow, that's great. I don't think we'll be able to experience great breakthroughs and victories apart from prayer. One person would say, I think the word of the Lord for us is doors, open doors. That the year 2024 will be a year of open doors for us. And I said, for me personally, I think the word of the Lord for us is the word roots. The word roots because this year, 2024, will be celebrating 40 years of our existence as a church when we started this movement or this church back in the university belt, the heart where we want to reach the future leaders of our nation who has a call for leadership. We are celebrating our 40 years. And there's a reason to celebrate. But our leaders 
have sought the Lord, our bishops have sought the Lord for the word for the year 2024. And the word that the Lord has given us through our leaders is this. The word is set apart where we get the word holiness or being holy. I believe there's a reason why the Lord wants to set us in for greater heights that this year will be a year of breakthrough. If the year 2023 was good, I believe that 2024 will be a great year for us. Can you say amen? amen. I believe 2024 is the continuity or start of a miracle. Yes, the mi miracle was the word for last year. We believe that there's going to be more that we're going to see in our own eyes that God is preparing us to experience. What a privilege for us to be part of what you call set apart. And that's why, starting tomorrow, I just want to emphasize, we would like to encourage you. We would like to encourage you as we, the whole victory movement in the Philippines and the global movement of every nation, lahat po tayo sa buong mundo na parte ng global family of churches natin called every nation, all across the globe, different nations will come together this week to consecrate ourselves for us to encounter God and experience God in a greater way. Let me ask you, how many of you wanted more of God this year than ever before? Wag mo sabing upo upo ka lang jan. Wag mo sabing this morning or last week nagkasala ka, may ginawa kang Hindi maganda at alam ni Lord at yung mga iba dyan, hindi pa nila alam at yung mga ginawa mo. O siguro kayo lang dalawa, dalawa ni Lord nakakaalam. Alam mo si Lord, hindi pa tapos sa buhay natin. God is the kind of God who will never point at you and condemn you. God is here to comfort you, to strengthen you, to heal you, to bring you to the next level and wanted spiritual growth to happen. And for us to experience this, I believe we want to start right. And we always do this, not religiously, but for us to take time to really seek God, know God, get into His Word, and be filled with God once again as we prepare for the stretch for 2024. Amen? I'd like us to, to stand in our feet today as we read God's Word, and I'm reading in the NIV version, 84. Joel chapter 1, verse 14. The Word of God would say, Declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, summon the elders and all who live in the, in the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. This is the word of, of, of the Lord for all of us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that once again, starting today, we want to say we want more of you. Lord, we are coming together as one church, as victory. Lord God, whom you have asked and be part of our church community here. Wherever we are, in this community, Lord, thank you that there is a call to a holy fast. And I'm asking, Lord, with the help of your Holy Spirit, that you will speak to us. I pray, Lord God, that you're preparing us for great breakthroughs and victories that will happen. So, Holy Spirit, may your will be done. May your kingdom come forth in our lives as we encounter you today. Meet with us in this preaching of the word. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone would say... Amen and amen. Please take your seats. Every year, we always do this. My prayer is as we take a moment to encounter God, that we're going to experience God in a different way. Sa totoo lang, pag may ginagawa ka na parate o hindi mo masyado ginagawa, tapos nagiging religious na siya, yung hindi na siya, wala na excitement, Ah, nagawa ko na yan eh. Ay, 
na-encounter ko na si Lord eh. Ay, nabasa ko na yan eh. Alam mo, hindi ho magandang attitude yun. Kasi nga, God always has something new for us. God always have a word for us. And the reason why we want to do prayer and fasting is really to consecrate ourselves. First and foremost, it is a personal walk with God. Hindi dahil po sinabi ng church na mag-fast, ay magpa-fast tayo. Yung mga encounter po sa Bible na nag-fast sila, kasi nakita nila yung importance na hindi nila kaya, wala po tayong kakayahan. We don't have the strength. We don't have the wisdom. We don't have the capability to live here on earth. Everything that you have. Sabihin po natin yung talento na binigay sa inyo, yung abilidad, gusto ko lamang po sabihin, hindi po sa inyo yan. Binigay yan ng Panginoon. Kaya tayo, wala ho dapat mayabang. Hindi dahil maraming pong kayamanan na ibigay sa inyo or you inherited from your family would say, because I, there is no way for us to brag before the Lord. All of us needs to experience the reason why we have a Savior and the Lord simply because we knew in our hearts that we cannot save ourselves. There is no way for us to overcome sin, issues, and problems in our lives apart from God. And that is why prayer and fasting is so important that this is a spiritual discipline. For us Christians, what do you mean when we say fasting? Well, it means, the Greek word, I'm not going to say, it's kind of complicated, but it means to abstain from food and drink. Excuse me. Hindi po ako nagpa-fast. Mamaya pa lang. The word is to cover your mouth. When we say fasting, is to abstain from all certain food as in observing a holy day or to eat very little or nothing. We want you to abstain from food. Why? Because we live in this flesh. Everything we do here in this world, it's all about the flesh. What this flesh wants. That's why it's easy for us. We're prone to sin. Our nature is we came from sin. And that is why we need to deny ourselves. We need to forsake ourselves and say, God, I want more of you. There's nothing in this world that I can't do apart from you, your power, and your Holy Spirit. As for us Christians, fasting is a spiritual discipline that deliberately or willfully denying yourself from your usual intake of food and drink, and mostly for spiritual purpose. There are different kinds of fasting. If I may, especially to those who are new in church, if you've been part of the church, especially if you have come for the past three years, especially during pandemic, there are different kinds of fast. We call it first the normal fast, or we call it for short water fast. Ito po yung normal fast ng water fast. No, no solid food, nor any liquid, only water. All right, you can fast by, well, I'm not, I'm not going to eat anything. I'm just going to have water. Anong kasing fasting mo? Water fast ako eh. Ah, for the holy, yes. I'm doing water fast. Okay. Secondly, total fast. Means no food and nothing to drink. Wow. This kind of fast is usually for special purpose that must be directed by the Lord. Like Moses for 40 days and nights when he went to the mountain and prepared the Ten Commandments, the tablets, he fasted for 40 days and nights. It was directed by the Lord. And for, for the, I just want to say, we don't want to, we, we don't want to encourage you to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. But I know someone I know a co-pastor of mine, I was blown away, really? Yeah, I'm doing 40 days and 40 
nights of fasting. Yun ang alang water fast lang. Partial fast. We call it liquid fast. Under this is liquid fast. Yung soup lang, wala hong meat, wala hong noodles, hindi ho ramen. <laughs> soup lang po talaga. Fruit juices. Alright, it's up to you, but there's still sugar in fruit juices. Buko, pineapple, apple, etc. If you want to do a fast just for liquid, you may do so. Daniel fast, the kind of fast which you want to take vegetables or maybe just fruits. That's only the kind of food that I'm going to, I'm going to take. Vegetables. For vegetarian ka, didi. Pag gusto mo, wag na mag, di ba, vegetables. Wag ka na lang muna kumain ng kahit ano. O mag water fast ka na lang. We have a one meal or two meal fast that you would skip a breakfast or sabi natin, ah, bukas mag-start ako, uh, two meal fast. I'm not gonna eat breakfast and lunch, but I'm gonna take dinner. Or maybe a one meal will do for you. Or maybe combination. All right, the whole five days, what kind of fast that you will refrain from eating the food? Why is that? Because I want more of God. In other words, we want to saturate of God's word, hearing from God, letting God be God to speak to us. From some, especially from the students, I, he- I would hear, Ay, magpa-fast ako yung social media fast. Wala mo ng social media, wala mo ng TikTok, wala mo ng games. I just wanna, instead of going to the social media, it's God's Word. Me and God. Hello? Okay po ba yun? We dedicate and consecrate ourselves to the Lord. It is consistent, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. For Nehemiah, before he rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem, he consecrated himself, asked the Lord. He had the burden to rebuild God's wall. This is God's wall. It has to be rebuilt. Lord, I have the burden. For me to take that step, I want to fast. Nehemiah did that. Hannah, when she was asking the Lord, Lord, give me a son, give me a baby. What she did, she did fast. And the Lord granted her a baby in turn to be what? To be one of the major prophets in the history of Israel by the name of Samuel. For those of you, probably you're believing God for something. This is a moment for you to fast. Daniel fasted, vegetables only, when he received the understanding of what will take place of the judgment concerning the end times. Coming from Archangel Gabriel, he fasted for the, to confess the sins of the people and the nations. Jonah, the judgment towards Nineveh when Jonah declared the judgment of God. The king called for a fast and repentance. That the whole Nineveh started to turn to God. They were basically, they, they don't know who God is. Who is this God? We, we don't like the judgment. Whoever that God is, we're going to turn to God and seek God. And the Lord heard them and behold his judgment. One of the greatest presidents of the United States, one of the great presidents of the United States by the name of Abraham Lincoln, during the Civil War, that lots of Americans died. They were divided. Abraham Lincoln declared a day of humiliation. Think about that. We're going to humiliate ourselves or humble ourselves. A day of humiliation for the United States so that the hand of God will come to us. That we are so full of ourselves, wanting this right, this right, my right. What about God's right? What is God want to do, to do for us personally and as a nation? He did call for a prayer and fasting. The scripture that we read, when the Israel came back from the exile of Babylon, 
a prophet by the name of Joel prophesied, there was a judgment that came. A massive locust came. And the whole land was devastated. There was no water. There was no food. And he declared, there's a call to a holy fast. A sacred assembly. All peoples, priests, farmers, drunkards, men and women has to come together so that God's promise of reconciliation, restoration, and blessing will come. There's a reason for us to fast. There is a call to fast. 23 stories in the Old Testament. 12 in the New Testament. All has something to do to separate ourselves from our flesh, from this world. But for us to focus on God, there's a call to fast. Why fast? First things first. Bakit po tayo nagpa-fast? Number one, Jesus, because Jesus himself fasted, taught and expected his disciples to fast. Our ultimate example, si Lord mismo. Eh, so Lord nga mismo, si Diyos na nga siya, eh, nagkatawan tao. Hindi po ba? If he himself fasted, how much more for us? Matthew chapter 4, verse 2 says, And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Jesus himself fasted before entering to the three crucial years of his ministry. He took time to pray and fast. He taught his disciples. Matthew 6, verse 16 and 18. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, you they have received their reward. Verse 18, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Jesus was telling his disciples, you can do this personally. You'd walk with me, right? This is different from us calling the whole church to fast as one. The whole nation to fast as one. But Jesus was telling, when you fast, as we fast, don't go to your office or to your class and say, Mom, nagpa-fast po ako. (laughs) Kanito itsura ko. There are benefits of fasting. But we're not going to declare ourselves fasting. For us, we are. There's a call to a holy fast. Fasting is Christ-like self-denial. If Jesus himself fasted, why can't we? Why can't you? Who are you not to fast? It's a spiritual discipline. It's like prayer. It's like reading the Bible. And it should be part of our lives. I've seen breakthroughs of people who had a hard time fasting. Back in New Belt days, may kakilala po kami, no? Well, si, yung time po ni Pastor Jonathan. Pastor Jonathan, remember si Tonet Macho, si Anthony Roquel, alright, who's attending our Victory Las Piñas. Talagang from Las Piñas pa, pupunta pa ng New Belt yan because that's, that was his church. Um, it was a transformation and his part. Alright, so yung nakikita natin sa school bukol, yung Tito Vic and Joey, yung, ano, tama ba yan? Mga 1970s siya, Pastor Jonathan, di ba? So, parang bata pa ako noon eh. Pero nabutan ko yon, okay? 80s, ah sorry, 80s. Okay, nga bata pa ako noon. So, sabi niya ganun, nahirapan siya kasi medyo, well, that time, overweight siya. Eh, puro buffet, mahilig kumain. Tapos, he's a big guy and I had a hard time with fasting, but I sought the Lord and asked the Lord, God, it's all about me. I need breakthroughs for myself, and please help me. For the very first time, sabi niya ganun, pag nagpa-fast ako dati, nanginginig talaga siya. Pero gradual. He started with just one meal. And then a year after, kaya na niya. 
still vegetables, fruits. The whole thing is he had the breakthrough in his fasting. My friends, in fasting, you do not twist the hand of God. That, uy, fasting pala. Pag nag-fast ako, automatic, hindi po. Yung soul natin, yung puso natin, ang tinitignan ng Panginoon. Gusto ni Lord, maging katulad natin siya. And this is part of our spiritual breakthrough. Why do we need to fast? Because Jesus himself fasted. Amen? He expects his people to fast as well. Next one. Why fasting? For spiritual brokenness or humility resulting to repentance. Later on in chapter 2 of Joel, it says there in 12, verse 12 and 13, Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and He relents over disaster. God wanted us to humble ourselves, and there is such thing as brokenness. Paminsan, kailangan may masama pang mangyari. Kailangan yung may circumstance or condition that is beyond our, our, situ- our situation, our strength. So pag nakita natin, saka tayo pupunta kay Lord at, Lord, naku, sige na nga, mag evangelize na ako, Lord. Lord, sige na nga, magta-type na ako, Lord. Lord, sige na nga, hindi na ako malilate sa 10 a.m. Lord, sige na nga, consistent na ako sa, sa pag-a-attend ng church. Kasi baka ngayon nandito ka, next week, wala ka na naman. Wala akong personal na, sorry. Not meant to. I'm not here to. Why? Because we're supposed to walk with God faithfully. He wanted wholehearted follower of Christ. And maybe you're here. Praise God you're here. You're hearing this message. I want you to understand. God wanted everything of you. Why? Because He gave everything of Him to us. And there's a reason for our living. There's a plan and purpose of God in our lives that He wants to fulfill. And there is no person who could fulfill this other than you. Hindi pa tapos si Lord sa buhay natin. Marami pang gagawin si Lord. Kaya nga sabi ko, upo-upo ka lang dyan. Kala mo, ganyan na itsura mo. Ganyan na itsura mo. Pero babagoy ka pa rin ni Lord. Can you say amen? And it takes humility. What God wanted is that we will turn away from our own selfish ways, our own selfish desires, our own flesh. The loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, the boastful pride of life that we may have God and return to God and return to our first love. Can you say amen for this? There is no genuine repentance apart from humility. That's why in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people, how many God's people do we have here today? Lift up your hands if you're God's people. Kokonti lang, kalahati lang. Again, how many God's people do we have here today? Well, the Lord is speaking to us. It says here, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Could it be possible the reason why there is no healing and breakthrough and provision? Because you're still living for yourself. That you've been praying for this. And it's not happening. Lord, why? Maybe. I don't know. May God speak to you. Maybe there are things that the Lord wants to deal. And let your heart be submissive to Him once again. What is that, my friends? If you're here today, may the Lord speak to us. What is the the very thing that God wanted from you? Kasi kinreate ka ni Lord. Kung alam mo lang, sobra, sobra. Hindi natin kailangan ng AI. 
You're enough. But there is more to what God wants to do in our lives, more than that you ever ex- expect and think of. James chapter 4, verse 6. To six verse 6, sorry. But he gives more grace, therefore it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. James chapter 4, verse 10, humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. I remember one time the Lord impressed me, this person who keeps on <laughs> afflicting me. Hirap eh, lalo na parang eh, ma-pride din ako eh. Di ba honey? Ma-pride ba ako? Kunti lang. O, tama na. <laughs> lalo na pag yung tipo. I grew up. Buti na lang naging Christian. <laughs> yung puot, galit, yung kinikim-kim. Tapos bigla na lang sasabog. Pag sumabog parang bulkan. I mean, na-encounter po ako na ganun. Ang tagal na sinasabi ni, sa, ni Lord sa akin, get right with this person. There was an encounter, a conflict. And that was the moment, that was the key. Ooh. May konting <laughs> sigawan noong una. Pero sabi ni Lord, mag-humble down ka. Eh hey Lord, tama ako eh. Ilang beses na to. I have the right. Lord, alam mo yan. Clear ang conscience ko. Ang conscience ko. Pero ganito sinasabi, ganyan, alam mo. Sabi, ang hirap. Iyak ako, humble down. Sorry. Baka parang si Melfred, sorry Melfred, huwag ka maiyak ha. <laughs> sorry. Sige, kung, I want to say sorry. I accept what you're saying. All right, if you think I'm the one to be blamed, okay. I'll take it and I'm sorry. I was expecting things will work out well. Aba, hindi. Lalo ko dinigdek, o oh, kita mo na, sinasabi ko sa iyo, ganyan. Ay, grabe yung... That moment, I knew it was hard. I'm full of pride. But I, I have to do it for God. And it didn't turn out well, as far as I'm concerned. All the more, I was put down. This person said all these words. Ah! But deep within me, I know I humbled myself. It was hard. Grabe yung pride ko, hindi ka, Lord. Tagal nang dinidil sa akin, Lord. That was a breakthrough. How many of you believe that if, you can, your, if your pastor can humble himself, you can also humble yourself before the Lord? And God can bring breakthrough. And the Lord showed me, as long as you're pure, you're right, no more saying all these words. Just accept it. Remember, I did that to you. I did that to all of you. I never say anything. I took all these beatings and those hits. Spiritual brokenness leading us to repentance and getting right with God. Second, or thirdly, spiritual freedom resulting to transformation. Isaiah 58, verse 6. It's not this fast that I choose to lose the bonds of wickedness. Bonds of wickedness. To undo the straps of the yoke. To let the oppressed go free and break every yoke. My friends, as we fast, the Lord wants you to experience freedom. What are the sin sin issues that you keep on compromising. Tagal na. Napakita ni Lord, di pa rin tayo nagbabago. Sikreto na nga eh. Tapos, pag mag-isa ka lang, nakokondem ka. Kaya hindi ka nakapag-church. Siyempre, paano, paano ako mag-church? Ito yung mentality. Eh, siyempre, isashare ko yung buhay ko, mapapahiya ako. Hindi nga eh. Mas tutulungan ka nga rito, wala naman magkokondem sa'yo dito eh. 
what are those struggles? What are those relationships that you have not forgiven yet? That you are not right to these people? Ano bang issue about lust? May ungodly relationship ba? May ka-text ba? May ka-meet up ba? May issue about money? Tithing ba is an issue pa rin? What is that? What is the Lord? Is it your pride that stands in the way? God, God wants to set you free. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Stand in firm and then do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. I remember a few years ago, during the time of prayer and fasting, like for fast forward, I remember, yeah, I was uh, still in my church. I was about to share that night for the prayer and fasting. That afternoon, I was driving and I hit a car while driving. So when I hit the car, it, Na bangga ako talaga pero so I underestimated kala ko <laughs> eh hindi na bangga ako so lumabas yung guy no para nakita niyo sa di ba sa TikTok sa eh. uso na kayo yun yung galit pagalit hindi pa lutong eh mo oh, wow <laughs> eh sweetness ko po yun eh pag ginanon mo ko parang tendency Ayoko ng injustice pag, la, pag tama ako, lalaban ako. E prayer and fasting. Buti na lang, baba ako. Tapos, alam nyo, nagso, iso. <laughs> Ang hirap, magsor, sorry. Kasi... Tapos, nandito yung asawa. Sabi ko, sorry, fall ko po. Ayaw pa rin. Sorry na. <laughs> Ano mo, kailangan ko bang bayaran? Sabi ko, sorry, pa. Sabi ko, pare, sorry ah, kasi kristyano ako eh. So, sinabi ko, kristyano ako. Ha? Kristyano? Ha? Kristyano ka? Eh, kristyano din ako eh. <laughs> ah, ganun. Sorry, pare, kristyano ako. I'm, I'm serving in victory eh. Ah, victory? Eh, victory ano ako eh. Wow. <laughs> so, victory. I don't come to think of it. How many of you, that's a divine appointment? <laughs> I could have, di ba? Pero baka pareho kami may problema, di ba? Instead of judging, wow, alam mo, grateful ako. Wow, pareho tayong victory, para tayong may issue. Siguro, baka binideal ka rin kay Lord, hindi yun. Victory ka pa naman! <laughs> Itong ano, kasama mo, pastor, di ba? Walang ganun eh. But you know what? Those are the times when I receive my breakthrough. And I kid you not, every time there's a person, <laughs> every time there's a person who would provoke me in driving, I, my kids would know this. Meron talaga mura, babae pa. Ang banat ko instead of, I bless you, <laughs> bless you, God bless you. Parang kaya ko na, may breakthrough na ako. Bakit? Kasi kailangan mangyari yun eh. And I believe the Lord wanted to set you free. What is that? What are your struggles? What are the things that has control over you but you cannot let go? You cannot change what you tolerate. You cannot change. I believe through prayer and fasting, it is for spiritual freedom that the Lord wants to change us. Are you here with me? It will lead to transformation. It is for freedom that the Lord wanted to set you free. Are you here with me? Next. For spiritual power resulting to fruitfulness. Overcoming the power of darkness. Let me ask you, how many of you want spiritual power? 
Ano po ang laban natin dito sa mundo? Spiritual eh. Spiritual eh. Sa totoo lang, di ba nakakaprovoke yung China? <laughs> Tapos ganun yung ginagawa. Pag nakita mo, parang... Now I start to speak blessing. But deep within me, parang Lord, paano to? God is sovereign. God will take care of us. He has proven Himself in so many times that His purpose will always prevail and we need the power of God. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, and Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil, and he ate nothing during those days. And they were, and when they were ended, he was hungry. My friends, for 40 days and 40 nights, he was on fast, but the enemy is out there for a battle. He will not give up in you. He will push your bottom of your weakness. But since you are in fasting, the Holy Spirit is there. As the scripture says, the Holy Spirit led Jesus to the wilderness to be tempted. Because God wanted Jesus. His father wanted his son to experience victory even in the midst of him during prayer and fasting. What I'm trying to say is fasting is a spiritual weapon. We can overcome. Are you here with me? There's a power of darkness in your own lives. You need to be set free. And there's such thing as your decision to stand up and decide not to give in. The only way for you to do that is for you, for you to have a spiritual weapon in us. As we pray and fast, there's going to be a supernatural power, a protection, and strength that come upon you for you to, 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 to have that conflict against the enemy. Are you here with me? Problema kasi natin, hindi tayo lumalaban. Grabe yung kasalanan. Sa totoo lang yung kasalanan. It's pleasurable. Gusto natin yung ano eh, yung, yung sarap na kasalanan. Sa totoo lang, flesh eh. That's why we have to refrain from eating and hear from God. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 18 to 21, And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and says, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Verse 21, However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. I thank God for our faith. Spiritual battle, it is for real. The enemy wants to set you in a trap. You've been there. He doesn't want to see victory over your lives. But you can have victory, amen. Because there's such thing as prayer and fast, and as we pray and fast, the Lord wants to lose the chains and set you free and able for you to confront the enemy, make a stand, and not to give in to unrighteousness and wickedness in this world. Can you say amen? amen. This is for spiritual conflict as a church. That's why we pray. We have the faith. But as we come in humility with prayer and fasting, I believe the Lord wants to give us greater victory and breakthroughs. Amen? Now to him, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. I hope you understand that there is power within us. When we come together as one, and as we pray and fast, I believe the Lord will give us a new power from the Holy Spirit. Are you here with me? Last but not the least, for the Spirit's intervention, granting our breakthroughs and victory. As we humble ourselves, consecrate, we're actually asking God, Lord, have your way. We're asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, di ko kaya to, Lord. Baguhin mo ako, Lord. Tagal na nito, eh. When sin enters in our hearts, you know what, what it does? There's guilt and there's shame. 
to our culture, when sin entered in our lives, there is such thing as shame. Kaya tayo nahihiya, di ba? Yung hiya man na nagawa ko to. Pero si Lord, naandun lang eh. Si Lord, hindi lang para gumubay, para bigyan ka ng lakas. Bagong lakas. And if you're here today, you're believing God for something. You're believing God for direction. How many of you are believing God for new direction? New purpose in your life. Raise up, raise up your hands. Here's what the Word of God says in Acts chapter 13, verse 2. While they were worshiping the Lord, were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. While during fasting, the Lord spoke. There is an assignment. There is a purpose I have for you, and I'm setting you apart. If you are believing God and asking God for direction, for promotion, this coming 2024, as we fast today, let's believe God for His direction, His guidance, His leading in our lives. Can you say amen? How many of you are believing God for salvation of your families? Let's pray and fast. Healing and miracles. Breakthroughs. Promotion. Provision. I'm believing God for provision. I don't know for you. But we're believing God that He is in covenant with us. And I, please, let's not make a mistake. I'm not doing this to twist the hand of God. I'm doing this. Kung hindi mangyari, may paraan si Lord. I'm not going to give up. But I'm going to humble down myself. Here's what happened in Joel. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 29. After they fasted, here's what the prophet Joel says, And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. The apostles quoted this when it was fulfilled in the New Testament in Acts chapter 2. A new spirit, the Holy Spirit came upon them with power. And that's what happened there. And I believe as we humble ourselves, pray and fast, we're going to counter the Holy Spirit in a new way. The Lord wants to set you free. He will empower you afresh. But you'll be led by the Spirit. You will be filled by the Spirit. And we're all going to receive and live by the Spirit of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The bottom line is, it starts with God. It ends with God. At the end of the day, we will say, Lord, I have a great year for 2024. Paumpisa pa lang to, pero Lord, tatapusin na natin. If you want to see faithfulness, I want to offer my heart to you. Lord, it's about me. Lord, not my will as you pray, but your will be done. Your will be done, Lord. Not anymore this person, the old Mark, but you that I will die to myself and be willing to let go. Can you say amen? amen? Let's watch this video as we end the service. Beginning with our annual week of prayer, fasting, and consecration, 2023 has indeed been a year of miracles, from healing miracles to family restoration miracles to relational miracles, financial miracles, new building miracles, church plant miracles. The greatest miracles of all have been the salvation miracles. I am hearing stories pouring in from all over the world. I've had the privilege of personally visiting our churches and campus ministries in Central America, different parts of Asia, all across the U.S. and the Middle East and Africa. And it is so encouraging to see what God is doing in terms of miracles. We really believe that when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the power to be His witnesses all over the world. Now, can't wait till our 2024 week of prayer, fasting, and consecration. Uh, our theme for 2024, not just the week of prayer, 
but all throughout the year will be set apart, a biblical view of holiness. We're going to go deep in scripture to study the nature of God and how the holiness of God sets us apart for his glory, for his purpose. Because God has set us apart for his purpose and his glory, we want to set apart January 8 through 12 to begin the year studying the holiness of God and the implications in our life, setting aside that week for prayer, fasting, and consecration. I hope you'll join us no matter where you are in the world. I want to pray for all of us as we pray. I really want to encourage everyone. If you have not done this, I highly encourage you. This is for you. And for those of us who's been doing, doing this religiously, parang familiar na, I pray for a different perspective of prayer and fasting. I just pray for God's breakthrough to come upon us. I want to take the moment to dedicate ourselves before the Lord and consecrate ourselves. Can we all stand up in our feet today? Thank you, Lord Jesus. As we leave this place, there's a booklet, as Pastor Steve mentioned, the whole week we're going to seek the Lord. And there's prayer meeting here every night. We're going to pray for nations. Amen? How many of you are believing that, there'll, that one day, all the nations of the world, we will have an every nation church? And you might be one of the answers, all right, for that nation. And we'll be praying for the nation tomorrow. On Tuesday, we're going to pray for our own nation. But we pray po natin, Pilipinas. But we pray po natin yung mga challenges na yayari po sa atin. On Wednesday, we'll be praying for the campuses. All right? The reason why we're here is also to reach the next generation. On Thursday, we'll be praying for us, the church. And on the fifth day, as we break our fast together, we'll be praying for our own breakthroughs. Amen? Can we take a moment and just commit this time before the Lord? And everybody heads bow down and eyes close. I want to declare Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Lord, I declare, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, for this is true and proper worship. For do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test, approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, thank you that you are our personal God, that we can't live in this world apart from you. Lord, today I pray for spiritual brokenness, that will lead to repentance. I pray for spiritual freedom resulting to transformation, spiritual power resulting to fruitfulness, and the power to overcome darkness. And I pray, Holy Spirit, for your intervention, granting breakthroughs for our victory. Lord, I'm asking you, as we leave this place, prepare us to humble ourselves, to consecrate, we're doing it, Lord, because of you. Lord, you did it, and we want to do it because we want more of you and greater hunger for you, Lord Jesus. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Make sure you have the booklets as you go out. Thank you and see you tomorrow in our prayer meetings. Thank you.